Is Maybe. my shirt showing? My undershirt showing? Oh, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. See me shaking it, my head. It's either. either undershirt or, like, <laughs> bare chest, and I'm not sure which is better. Bare, bare chest was much bare better. Bare I feel it's very 70s. I need, like, the gold chains to, to no. accent both of them. Sex positive culture. It's my body to give. Are threesome gifts a thing? Taking a bra off. I like your bed. Horizontal. 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 This is Horizontal with Lila. I'm Lila, and I'm Horizontal in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. I'm Dennis. And I'm Jillian. And, and we're, we're Horizontal, Horizontal with, with Lila. Lila. I love snuggling, sleepovers, storytelling, sex, and stargazing, among other things. So I've metaphorically rolled them up in audio form and made you this podcast. Horizontal is slow radio. We're lying down, usually late at night, wearing robes, sharing secrets in your ears. It's like consensual eavesdropping. During seasons one and two, I got horizontal with one guest at a time. This is season three. Season three is mostly comprised of threesomes. Myself, plus two guests who are in some kind of relationship with one another. The relationships we've explored so far are manager and client, play party co-hosts, men's group leaders, primary poly partners, monogamous married mates, and a couple of wizard friends. Typically, each horizontal conversation is between two and three hours long and divided into two parts. The part ones are available in all the podcast places, and the part twos are available exclusively to my patrons. This horizontal conversation took place over the course of five hours. I'll be dividing it into four parts. The first two, episodes 98 and 99, will be available in all the podcast places, and the last two will be available exclusively to patrons of the Horizontal Arts. To become a patron, go to patreon.com slash horizontal with Lila. At the $7 a month tier, you get access to the full Horizontal, including all the part twos, and in this case, threes and fours. You have to type the exact address into your search engine, though, because quote-unquote adult creators are made unsearchable on Patreon. I am now more than ever, committed to independent, uncensored, sex-positive art that makes the world a more intimate place. You can be part of my mission at patreon.com slash horizontal with Lila, p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash horizontal with Lila. In this episode, I lie down with my friend Jillian Richardson, anti-loneliness crusader, creator of The Joy List, author of Unlonely Planet, and Dennis E. Sarkozy, lifestyle designer, co-lead of personal development nerds, her housemate, her chosen family, her brother. Jillian and I share a mission to make the world a less lonely, more intimate place. She is a kindred in public vulnerability, a gatherer, a connector, Jillian is in the business of belonging. It is such important work. It is soul-saving work. The Joy List is a weekly compendium of events in New York City that you can go to alone and leave with a new friend. It is one of the few newsletters that I read every week without fail. I suggest that you sign up for The Joy List on joylist.nyc and follow Joy List NYC on social media, even if you don't live in New York. In each edition of The Joy List, Jillian shares a brief personal essay about something she's grappling with or breaking through. She does this because she's as committed to authentic communication as I am. She doesn't want to purport that she has it all figured out. I respect that. And even so, I sometimes find myself feeling envious of her productivity, her diligence, her powerful mission focus, her myriad invitations, and the adoration of her peers, her audience, and pretty much everyone who comes across her work. What I really want to do with my envy is connect, understand, motivate, collaborate, 
and lift each other up. Jillian once said that she felt like we were this gif of women's hands continually lifting each other up over and over and over. And that I am committed to. Her book, Unlonely Planet, How Healthy Congregations Can Save the World, is a heartful tome about seeking, curating, and creating the kind of communities that truly nourish us. I have five words for it. Buy. Read. Gather. Nourish. Love. You can find it, of course, in the Amazon. Jillian and Dennis have been living together with their two other housemates in mini-community for two years. Dennis Sarkozy is a curator of many kinds. He designs community and wellness strategies for large corporations, experiences for multiple groups in New York City, and events for his beloved personal development nerds, PDN for short. Jillian describes him as the most extroverted person she knows, and she knows more than a few extroverts. PDN was one of Jillian's first communities in New York, but it's not where they met. You'll get that story in a later episode. It's a gathering of lifelong learners, co-led by Dennis and Giovanni Beckford. Their main events consist of brief lectures and breakout conversations. Members are encouraged to bring in their works in progress, nascent presentations, burgeoning projects, their early iterations, to experiment and activate, to give and receive feedback. They stand for each other's growth. And that is the sense I get from Dennis. Dennis stands for everyone's growth. He stands for potential and for possibilities. You can find him at D.E. Sarkozy, D-E-S-A-R-K-O-Z-Y, on Instagram. In this, the first episode of our four-part conversation, I cleared the air with Jillian after our canceled sleepover event. I also expressed how I feel about Dennis. We discussed the difference between being drawn to and being attracted to a person. The difference between sexual and sensual energy, and whether it's palpable. The touch gauntlet. And I share a sexual fantasy that I'm pretty sure is going to make Jillian uncomfortable. So come lie down with us for the first time in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. <laughs> oh, man. Mm-hmm. We have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. You're going to break my heart if you edit all this out. This is the best part. <laughs> I mean, I don't know where it's going to go from here, but it's already pretty high up there. Oh, oh excellent. For as far I'm, as I'm sweating. Go. I'm sweating mm. from that. <laughs> we exerted ourselves. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there are a few things that I want to clear before I can dive into this as I usually do. Mm-hmm. So I feel a little nervous. I actually felt nervous on the way over here, which I don't usually feel nervous before recording. And it's because Jillian, you and I haven't talked in a long time. Yeah. I, I haven't been sharing something with you because I feel fear around it. I feel scared to share it. And I feel scared because I... I'm afraid that it will trouble the waters of our friendship. And I don't want to do that. What I actually really want to have come out of it is to feel closer to you and to feel like the air is clear and there isn't, there isn't that twinge or that disturbance Mm -hmm. when I think about us and our connection. Yeah. That's what I really want to come out of it. I want, to feel closer, not further away, but I've been afraid to share the reflections and the impact because of the fear that it will bring us further away from one another. And so what I've been afraid to share is that when we scheduled the sleepover and decided to collaborate, which I know you were hesitant about, but then decided to do so, Mm -hmm. and 
people felt like it was too expensive and they maybe talked to you about it. I felt like instead of believing in the magic that we were going to create for people and that it was worthwhile and that it was worth what we had decided that it was worth to offer that experience to people. It felt like when you shared about it in the newsletter, you were apologizing for our decision to do that. And and it seemed like it was palpable to all your readers. And if I had read that, I wouldn't want to go because I didn't I wouldn't have thought that Jillian was excited about it. So if she's the creator and she's the leader and she doesn't, you know, think it's worth it, she's like, well, it's because of the space that we're charging this. Or I felt like it downplayed what we were creating. And then I felt embarrassed and upset and a bit resentful. I feel really hot in my cheeks telling you this. Mm. Um, and, And resentful. And I have felt a little bit resentful ever since. And I noticed that since then, we haven't gotten together. You haven't texted me. You haven't reached out to me. I went to your book launch and I celebrated you. And I, you know, did those photos with your book because I really want to support you. And I love you and I care about what you're doing in the world. And I do think we are Mission Soul Sisters. But I felt like you removed yourself from me after that somehow or you didn't like value me as much in your life after that or something. And I never brought it Mm. up to you because I felt scared that then we would be further away from one another. And so I felt nervous to approach this recording because I can't do it without telling you this. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. I'm oddly feeling more calm now that you shared that. Uh, I... I'm hearing you share that. Mm, I'm trying to remember what I said in the newsletter, first of all. Was it when I mentioned it in the newsletter? Was I sharing that the price of the event was because of renting the space? Or was it, did I say something in the intro about the price of the event was high because of the space? I don't remember. Something like that. Just like you weren't like, the price is high because it's going to be an amazing experience. Mm -hmm. You were like, uh, so sorry, guys, you know, that it's, Oh, I think it was like I canceled like ticket, like tickets were out of people's price range, but we couldn't change the ticket price because of the venue or something like that. It was before that. Yeah. It was before we canceled it. It was like without enthusiasm. Yeah. You know, whereas everything else you put in the newsletter, you were so enthusiastic about, including things of mine, events of mine that you've been really warmly enthusiastic about. And lots of people came to 14 Rooms because of the joy list. Yeah. And and people have come to the Art of Trust because of the joy list. And I'm so grateful for that. And then I felt this marked contrast between the way that you Mm -hmm. shared about those things and the way that you shared about the thing that we were ostensibly going to co-create. Totally. And then because I had this seed of resistance resentment. I stopped looking at your Instagram stories. I kind of stopped following you as closely because because I had this like sort of um ground that or water that was troubled. Yeah. Then I started to judge the way that you're putting yourself out on social media and how you're always asking for something when I actually think that that's amazing. Mm-hmm. Right? I think that the fact that you are unabashedly asking for what you want is amazing and you're doing it in the face of a culture that tells women not to ask for exactly what they want yeah and so I actually really admire that you're doing that Mm -hmm. but there was this part of me that was like it's always you know and then when somebody Mm -hmm. said when you wrote that somebody called you out on directing the conversation back to yourself I Mm -hmm. was like she does always do that and Mm -hmm. I was like and and just instead of you know calling you up and saying, Jillian, can we just get together and talk? Because I'm not feeling so good. Yeah. So it sounds like this, like, uh, I think in the newsletter, I wasn't super, like, as enthusiastic with that experience as I have been with things that I've been to before. Because honestly, part of me was afraid of not doing a good thing. And I think I could sense in myself a a little bit of a lack of commitment of like, 
I felt a little bit overwhelmed in that moment in time. And I was like, oh, man, I'm not totally sure. Not because of you, but because of myself of like, I'm not sure what I'm going to be contributing to this space. I'm not sure what the experience is going to be like. I think it'll be fun. But like, would I pay this much money for this? And I was starting to doubt myself. I felt super frustrated because, and then I'm like, why did you agree? You took 24 hours to think about it if you weren't committed to it. And if you didn't believe that I could create a magic space, because I said that I would take on Mm -hmm. that part of it, then why did you agree? I felt mad. That makes sense. And you have been to things that I've created before. And since I said that I was going to make that space, Mm -hmm. then now I realize I'm feeling like you didn't trust me to make something amazing. And I always make something amazing. Yeah. I always create spaces that people are enlivened by and and can be cathartic and... And it was going to be a combination of all of these things that I had created and with more time. Mm -hmm. And so why didn't you trust me? Honestly, and this might sound like a cop up, but it wasn't as much of a trust of you as a, I think I was having a comparison thing going on in my head because I remember, I think there was also some, there was the burlesque raid going on. And I think that really tripped me up when I saw that. And of course, it's completely different things, but like their prices were like the same. And I'd already started to get feedback from people of like Jillian. Like I had a few people reach out to me and they were like this thing. Like I was so excited when I saw that you were putting this thing out. But the ticket price is the same thing as the burlesque raid. And that's like a thousand person crazy yacht boat party with like all of these things. But it's about what you value, isn't it? Right. And so if if the value is placed on spectacle, then yes, of course, if the value is placed on an intimate encounter, a Mm -hmm. deeply intimate encounter with people that will leave people feeling seen and heard and pleasured, which, by the way, I've been to big, extravagant parties that cost that much, and I would have rather been to a 30-person sleepover where I got to look in everybody's eyes. Yeah. And feel connected. Totally. Yeah, so I think... I struggle with hearing that people are unhappy. And I had a few people reach out and tell me that they were not happy with the price. And it made me start to question it myself in a way that I don't think that would have happened if I hadn't been getting feedback from people of like, why are you doing this? Like, I think it made me lean towards sounding more... I guess, apologetic in the way that I was writing about it of like, oh, sorry that this is so expensive Yeah, because I wanted to be pleasing, imagining that like, oh, well, these people already reached out saying that they were upset. So I imagine more people are thinking that and I just want to seem uh, kind. Mm. Yeah. So for me, it wasn't a, oh, I don't trust Lila to create a great space. It was, I feel bad that this thing that I've made is seeming like out of reach for people or like maybe it's actually too expensive for my readers and I just didn't know that and now I'm creating a thing that no one can go to yeah and it's like not I guess I was kind of equating like spectacle with value in that moment of like oh it's it's not gonna be as valuable because like there's this other thing the same night that's the same price and like everyone's just gonna go to that thing Mm -hmm. yeah so that's what was going on in my head of like a fear of being disappointing. I did a a horizontal storytelling on the same night as the big pride night. And yeah. people cautioned me against that. And I said, there have to be 50 people in this city who don't want the spectacle, who would rather be in a cozy, connected, intimate Mm -hmm. space and there were yeah you know so I hear you thank you for sharing that and I respect that you do that as a way to make the one just like our relationship clear but also so that you can feel like present for this thing that you make for the people who love it that's really cool and you didn't have to do that and I think it's really brave thank you 
And the other thing <laughs> <laughs> uh, that I feel I have to presence is that I'm really attracted to Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Oh my God. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> I've never recorded with somebody that, no, that's not true, but I have, I've never recorded something I could release with somebody that I was attracted to. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> uh, and also, <laughs> and also with. I appreciate that you say this is the second thing. Mm. Yeah. Why? It was just because it made me laugh. Oh, okay. And also with uh, with the the boundaries, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Of Dennis having a partner and me feeling a little. And I actually expressed this to Dennis before at your book launch when we were to share withheld compliments. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. I came up. Do you remember what I said? Mm -hmm. I do. What did she say? Uh, I was told in confidence when we were sharing secrets during your book launch. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he didn't tell me. It's okay if you want to share it now and you remember. I, I don't remember exactly how I worded it. I think you worded it pretty closely in the way that you even just shared about it. Yeah. But I also shared that I felt uh, an additional discomfort mm -hmm. around Gigi mm -hmm. because of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Knowing. Yeah. And not wanting to encroach or have anybody feel uncomfortable because of mm -hmm. my desire and I was like well maybe I won't feel it anymore like maybe when I show up at their house I'm not gonna feel mm -hmm. it anymore mm -hmm. and then we won't have to talk about it mm -hmm. yeah so I remember you saying pretty that you felt fine about it <laughs> <laughs> you're like cool uh so mm -hmm. how do you feel now hearing that Oh, I'm disappointed to think that you arrived at our house and no longer find me attractive <laughs> or no longer attracted to me. That's and... not what happened. Mm. That's what I'm saying. Oh. I thought mm. that maybe maybe that mm. would have dissipated. Sometimes mm. I, I'm able to turn it off, mm -hmm. almost like a faucet. I'm like, okay, this is not a good place for energy. So let me just... And turn that flow off. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I do it. And I'm never attracted to the person ever again. And nope, still attracted to you. <laughs> I can actually feel, I feel like a little, a little quiver on my insides talking about this right now. Mm. I also felt nervous to, to have Jillian know that I'm attracted to her housemate. I don't know mm -hmm. why. Maybe because you have that brotherly relationship with him. How do you mm -hmm. feel about this, Jillian? I feel very amused. <laughs> <laughs> why? Well, because it's like everyone thinks this about Dennis. They just don't say it out loud. So I'm delighting in this. No, my oh. cheeks are warm. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, uh, they are. <laughs> well, it's like hilarious because when, whenever people are like, wait, who's your roommate? I'm like, you know, the guy with the like the gorgeous guy with the hair. And they're like, mm. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, that's just how mm. you're identified as a human being. Mm. He does um, look today a bit like if... Fabio had never gotten buff and was just beautiful. <laughs> you look like a slender Fabio, Dennis. <laughs> How do you feel? Oh, um, like a slender Fabio. Mm, I can't believe that's the comment. Um, oh, I'm gonna. Sorry. Um, no, no. Thank you for expressing that. No, it's more like Legends of the Fall. Uh, sorry. Oh, ahead. that is exactly the compliment. So Sexy. That I was hoping to receive. Oh, I so appreciate that. Mm. And it is incredibly difficult for me to receive compliments, so I'm just going to say thank you. Mm. And I'm also imagining, like, what better way to spend time with someone you're attracted to than in bed recording a podcast? Mm -hmm. like, I should only <laughs> hope so much for everyone. Sneaky, sneaky. <laughs> that... For anyone who's attracted is to anyone in the world. Is this what you wanted to world, do with me and Dennis? I was like, <gasps> weird. Why does she want to do with me and Dennis? But okay. No, but maybe. But this is but no. We have, we have such a story, but. It was not mm. on the top of my mind, but mm -hmm. maybe it was underneath my mind. Mm -hmm. 
that subconscious. <laughs> Ooh, I'll get to, I'll get was, to lie down next to Dennis and stroke his hand. I was like, when is Lila going to ask me to be on her podcast? <laughs> and I was like, oh, she wants me and Dennis to be on her podcast? Okay. <laughs> like, I, like, Dennis and I are not like a known podcast duo. <laughs> Yet. Yet. <laughs> so, Until now. This is so the here's inaugural the interview with the podcast duo. <laughs> mm-hmm. That I'm is really- Dennis and Jillian. I'm really Mm. trying to have Mm. season three be all trios. And what I really, what I really hoped for was Jillian with a family member of hers because I Mm. haven't had family members on. Oh man, that would be bad shit. Mm. Except for myself and my dad. And I didn't think that any of her family members would do it. And then I confirmed with Jillian that none of her family members would do it. And so I thought, well, I... I'm always trying to broaden people's idea of intimacy and also <laughs> broaden people's idea of family. Mm-hmm. And so I thought, well, mm. who's Jillian's chosen family? <laughs> it This one. <laughs> <laughs> that is um, a thing that we've said at the beginning throughout. That is such a celebration of even of Jillian and my relationship. And it really feels like chosen family. Mm-hmm. And the... The people that we've surrounded ourselves with, like two weeks ago, celebrated a Canadian Thanksgiving because one of my closest friends, Ruth, is all but orphaned here in the city. And we are a chosen family. And That was such a good um, dinner. But looking more, more forward to our Friendsgiving and to our friend celebration of Christmas, even though my family's an hour away and I get to see them all the time and we are loving and have so much fun together and also... My chosen family here in New York has helped me feel a sense of belonging and closeness and has seen me for who I am now rather than who I was 30 years ago or 20 years ago or 10 years ago. Like you're people who have helped me become the person that I am by seeing me now. My heart's gooey. Hmm. (laughs) So that's the conscious reason, right? I wanted to explore all these different kinds of relationships. And I've had a manager and her client. I've had the co-hosts of an all-female sex party. I've had collaborators who make a series called The Discerning Dick, where dudes talk to dudes about sexuality. I love their podcast. I've had primary poly kinky partners. And I've had, who else was it? I think I've had one more duo. And my interest is in showing as many different types of deeply intimate relationships as I can. Mm -hmm. So that's the conscious reason. Mm. But also, I really am enjoying (laughs) the opportunity to be this close Mm. to Dennis. And as I say that, I'm snuggling into him and wondering Mm. if it's out of bounds. And I'm like, because I know that I know that my sexual energy is really powerful. And I know that I have used it in both in both glorious and nefarious ways in my life. <laughs> glorious and nefarious. It's that white hat and black hat wizardry. Actually, this is, I feel very identified with this. My name, Lila, my mom chose it. So it means night in Hebrew and Arabic, right? Mm. But she apparently did not know this. And she said she chose Lila because it meant white as a lily, pure as a lily. And then it also means dark as the night. So I've always felt like I was white as a lily, dark as the night. Whoa. Wow. And I identify with the first stanza of She Walks in Beauty. Do you know it? Um, Not off the top of my head. Could you recite it? She walks in beauty like the night of cloudless climes and starry skies. And all that's best in dark and bright meet in her aspect and her eyes. And so I've thought if I ever get a tattoo, I would get two cuffs and one would represent white as a lily and one would represent dark as the night. And they would be the inverse of one another. Hmm. Are we recording right now? Like, is this the podcast? This is the podcast, (laughs) right? Yeah. (laughs) Okay, cool. (laughs) Welcome to Horizontal with Lila. (laughs) I I was like, are we, did we start at the clearing or are we, did we start after that? (laughs) It's all a part of it. So the clearing is a part of the podcast. Mm, Yeah. Cool. Yeah, because it's, I'm always wanting to let people eavesdrop on intimate conversations. Mm -hmm. And it is what I would have done if we were not recording anyway. The first time we had a chance to be alone together Mm -hmm. and drop in. 
And I want people to hear that. Yeah. What that's like, you know? So I just, I guess I keep asking because I, so me having this open channel of sexual energy and some of it flowing your way is not a problem for you, Dennis? Uh, thinking of a response to that. Well, so Jillian and I have had this chat before about <laughs> attraction and what that word means. Mm -hmm. And what does it mean? Well, like a magnet, I like to think that I am attracted to certain types of people that bring out a certain feeling in me or have these radiant qualities, these things that are so attractive that I want to spend more time with them and will prioritize them because I'm just so drawn to them and who they are and how they show up and conversely how they make me feel. And I think the flip side of that is repulsion. So in that same mm -hmm. way, I hope to attract the right type of people and repulse or repel the people who are not ultimately attracted to me. And I sure as heck hope that all of my friends would say that they are attracted to me and my communities are attracted to me just as I am attracted to them. That that feeling of attraction is a desire to have more of one person in my life. And it's based on certain qualities. And I should hope that just like I'm attracted to, to like Jillian for her kindness and warmth, which is why we would elect well. to enter our relationship as chosen <laughs> brother and sister and live together. So am I attracted to, and would imagine that I am, have many people who are attracted to me in that way, not simply because of my hair. It has nothing to do with your hair. I know. <laughs> It's really a mess lately. <laughs> so for those mm. words, I would, for those words, for that sentiment, I would use the words drawn to. Mm. And I would use attracted to for a particular kind of being drawn to someone. But I understand that it's when you're talking about magnets, mm -hmm. it is without, <laughs> without <laughs> sexual charge or without sensual charge, just mm. a drawn to or drawn away or pushed away or repelled. Mm doesn't really answer my question, I notice. I wonder if you can feel this. I'm going to turn off my sexual energy towards you. Do you feel a difference? <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe that your posture changed a bit. You only felt the postural change. Um, yes. Jillian, do you feel a difference in the room? I mean, it's it feels like there's less, like the air got a little less gooey and warm. Mm -hmm. That's that that's thing? the feel. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. I'm gonna turn it back on. Yeah, turn it back on. Let's let's. <laughs> well, you also, <laughs> also just breathes long, really deep. Yeah, with that deep breath. I did. It's in there. That's part of it. With that deep breath in yeah, our ears. That's yeah. part of it. And, yeah. Uh, yep. Okay. That's that's noticeable. Yeah. Everything just softened a bit. Well, it's funny because I, as you mm. said that, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I'm feeling it in my body because you're literally cueing it. But it, like, as you're saying, like, turn on and off, like, I'm feeling it in my body, too. So mm -hmm. I don't know if Dennis is like a conduit for your energy into my body mm -hmm. or if it's just the response that I'm having, imagining it being turned on. It could be on. both. It could or be both. either or. Yeah. I do think it's possible for you to feel it. Mm -hmm. I'm like gold, a perfect connector without <laughs> loss at all. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's actually just passing right through me, <laughs> right into Jillian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Conduit for sexy lady energy. Mm -hmm. So uh, I... I, I <laughs> 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 new Twitter the title of Dennis's book. New Twitter bio. Mm -hmm. So I teach this when we do the art of trust and and we do the touch gauntlet. And oh, the touch gauntlet's the best. The touch gauntlet. Yeah. And oh, you, you would love it, Dennis. You proclaim at the top of the touch gauntlet whether you want to be touched with sensual intent or sexual intent, and you invite also the the feel of the kind of touch that you want. For instance, mm. somebody said that they wanted a party. And we gave them a party as they went down the line. And somebody said they wanted to be touched with great beauty. Mm -hmm. And we did that for them. And it was palpable and it was different, right? So I can touch you. I'm going to do it with both of you. Dennis, I can touch you with sensual intent. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. So it's just about the sensory experience. And Jillian, I'm going to touch your arm. Mm. Sensual intent, you know, the sensory experience. And I can do, I mean, I probably can't do ex- the exact same motion, but I can do pretty much the same motion with sexual intent. Mm-hmm. Slower, more languid. <laughs> hmm mm. <laughs> So comes with a moan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean you're only you're only reflecting the mm-hmm. the physical difference. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I feel an energetic difference. Mm. I feel a, a pulsing mm-hmm. and like a an inner mm. tickle. Inner tickle. Yeah. Mm. And so You're I'm going to ask this you... This is so exciting. What? <laughs> thinking about <laughs> those distinctions are, is so exciting. And so... Mm. <laughs> so I'm going to ask again if that... How that has you feel... It's a two-part question, but mm. that's the first part. How that, how that has you feel. Mm. If I direct sexual desire towards you and don't don't stop it Mm. or don't transmute it Mm -hmm. into a more friendly sensual experience yeah it's like the difference of that warmth and compassion and feeling seen to the oh like let's grab a latte at three (laughs) what it's really casual (laughs) you know it's just like oh let's hang out is that the that's that's the second yeah the, the second one was just like oh we're just in each other's space but the first one was really it feels like being held. It's really lovely. The sensory one, the sensual one, feels like a latte. The when you turned off earlier, when you you cranked the faucet off, <laughs> and with, as we said, that the air just got still. Right. Yeah, that feels like ah, uh, we are just three neighbors sharing a pillow. <laughs> Neighborinos <laughs> just sharing pillows, facing a microphone. Right. And the other one feels as though we're being held in this space. And how would Gigi feel about it if she were? Similarly, the the recipient of your sensual energy. <laughs> no, if she knows that I'm directing it at you, or um, sharing it with you, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. Like we we chat very openly about our own boundaries and what we're looking for out of the relationship, and it is by far the most mature relationship I've had in that we we fluidly and openly communicate. And I think that she's been with me around people who would demonstrate their want of my attention. And she's communicated it and showed up without envy and recognized that that I'm in a relationship with her with two feet in. And I would upwardly and openly communicate anything as it comes up to her. I think that she would trust me enough in our relationship enough to know that I can receive and your energy and your openness without threat or without concern. That's beautiful. And admirable on her part to be so um, in belief, in trust in your relationship. Jillian, I'm going to, I, <laughs> I want to share an intimacy mm-hmm. that might be a little edgy for you. Ooh, wait, Mm -hmm. an intimacy that's edgy for me? Is this about me? No. Mm. Am I involved in any way? Uh Uh-uh. Why wouldn't it be edgy for me? I think you're going to be fine with it. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I'm so... Are you ready? Okay, so this has nothing to do with me. No. Okay, cool. I'm confused, (laughs) but all right. I just think Mm. you might, I don't know, feel a little, a little... Uncomfortable. I'm. I'm getting. I'm sweaty again. I'm sweaty <laughs> again. Whew, okay. Uh, mm-hmm. Now I'm. Yeah. I'm flushed again. Okay. All right. So. <laughs> Do you know what she's about to say? I have no idea. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm like. I don't. I'm like. There has to be something with me My involved in this. Mind no. Is so, scanning right I, now. What this could be. But I think that no. It. It's, there's, mm. It doesn't have to do with you, Jillian. I just think it might make you uncomfortable. <laughs> Great. Okay. Just wanted to like safe port that. Sa- yeah. Safe, safe port it. Tell you that I'm gonna do it before I do it. Before okay. I say it, you know. Okay. Brace embracing myself. <laughs> Is that safe porting? Safe yes. port. Safe port. Safe port. 
it's a BDSM term, mm. and it's like I'm going to use the cane now, and you mm. wait, and you look for a response verbally or non-verbally of a or dissent, so that you can choose how to proceed. Mm. And so we use it as a, a casual term when we are asking to enter another floor in my house. We knock and we say safe porting mm. and then we wait. And if somebody's like, uh, then we leave, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and usually usually it's like, come enter or come on in. Or if it's n- nothing, we know that nobody's there and we can we can enter. Mm-hmm. So I'm safe porting that I'm going to say something that may be a little edgy for Jillian. OK, so. <laughs> For a couple of weeks, maybe even three weeks after that experience of telling you that I was attracted to you, I had this elaborate masturbation fantasy. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so this has something to do with me in like an adjacent way. About, about, (laughs) about being at class and co the co-working space no. wait and so why would this make me uncomfortable but not dennis because <laughs> i didn't think he would be uh i just didn't think he oh, would be I very affected it. by but it. it's about him i know i'm guessing <laughs> <laughs> i know but my, i just thought you would be uncomfortable I'm, but he would be fine yep i'm waiting that's hilarious one day you'll be in this situation and see how comfortable it is to jillian <laughs> Are you being sarcastic? No, I told I told you I'm not being sarcastic. Okay. I'm being 100% authentic. Okay. That this is very comfortable Man, in spite of how... I don't feel uncomfortable. I feel just amused. <laughs> <laughs> I am so hot right now. I am so... <laughs> I am like feverish right now. Okay. So this elaborate masturbation fantasy about right? you, Dennis, where we would illicitly go in the... <laughs> hallway of class and go was this in the during back. my book launch no this is afterwards <laughs> after i told him i was attracted mm-hmm. to you um so it'd be during a work day and we would go in the back hallway of class and co and we would be illicitly you would go down on me and i'd be standing and you'd be on your knees in the hallway mm-hmm. And then you'd put your fingers inside me. <laughs> and then you'd fuck me in the hallway while I was saying how naughty it was. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was wrong. I'm a little uncomfortable. You're right. I told you. Thank There's you. a little bit of uncomfort wow. there. Gosh, thank you so much for sharing that. <laughs> that is. Um... You're like, that's cool. <laughs> it was so hot. Cool, cool. I would come every time mm. very hard and very mm. loud. How do you think Gigi would feel about that one, Dennis? <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll wait for her to, to post in the comments, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Um, wow. That was delightful to be on the receiving end of that share. Thank you, Isla. <laughs> I really thought you were going to say like while you were editing a podcast or something or yeah what do you mean oh that you were like still working during it or something like that you're like oh back to work oh mm. no no mm. full break mm-hmm. from work mm-hmm. but you know we should should have been working mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and you shouldn't have been doing it because of course you're terrible and naughty and bad mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Classic it, it Dennis. Is, it's so naughty. <laughs> if there's one word I associate with Dennis, it's, <laughs> it's definitely naughty. <laughs> I'm guessing. Just saying that out loud was that like, was sarcasm. Oh, that was sarcasm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I broke mm-hmm. my rule. Mm-hmm. That was sarcasm for sure. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't that mean. It was, it, it was a bit of hyperbole there. <laughs> oh my God. Maybe mischievous. Yeah. I was not expecting this podcast taping to go in this direction. Oh, this is better than any direction it could have gone in. This episode was mixed and mastered by Irving Godori. He's available in New York City in the tri-state area for all your audio needs. Hire him on igrecording.com. My intro music was composed by Alan Markley, who is Plastic Cannons on Instagram. And my cover art was designed by Shauna Shea.
whom you can hire on 99designs. Next week's episode will be part two of my four-part conversation with Dennis and Jillian. So until next time, may you have someone to love, something to do, and something to look forward to. I actually can't think of anything that I'm looking forward to this week, so that's something that I will have to work on. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. And thank you for getting horizontal. So now I have a fever. Mm-hmm. Great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm.